Robert. Hey, Steve. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for taking the time with me. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. You you may laugh at this because this is an actual coincidence. An okay. Actual coincidence because we've bumped around our interview times uh, a few times, and all of a sudden, I'm actually uh, have to watch my sister's puppy as we're having this conversation. <laughs> The golden well, as, long as, as long as it's not a cat, we're okay with that. Right? <laughs> that would be going the other way. <laughs> um, I, would say, I would say if a cat was a golden retriever, it'd probably eat you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that'd be terrifying. <laughs> uh, honestly, it's it's so great to chat with you, and I mean, congratulations on on the franchise. Coming back to life on Disney Plus, um, this is this is a big deal. This is a fran this franchise has been around for 20, 25 years. Is it roughly? Yeah, now? yeah. I mean, it's uh, that that one the one movie, the Air Bud original Air Bud movie spawned five Air Bud sequels or, or four Air Bud sequels, uh, and then nine Air Buddies movies, which was the talking uh, animal Gordon Retriever puppies, which was so successful. And then two Santa Paws movies, which were, you know, a spinoff from the Santa Buddies. So, you know, and uh, so it's it's been a, an, an incredible um, ride. But, I, you know, in a weird way, surprising. But when you look back in, in hindsight, you go, OK, when something's this special and uh, has uh, has resonates with so many people, you know, it was a very it was a very uh, Airbud was made for four and a half million dollars. You know, it wasn't a big budget movie. Uh, and it was a movie that every studio turned down, including Disney, wow. when we originally made it. And it, Disney ended up acquiring the distribution rights to the U.S. after the fact. So it wasn't. It was like, you know, it's one of these things where, you know, when you 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 have to kind of believe in yourself a lot because you know every every you, most people's job is to say no and re, and rejections is part of our business. So. So, but it was, you know, it's just something very special and it just, and it has resonated over this, as you said, lifetime of 25 years. And this is the first time we've had everything on Disney plus. So, you know, and, and, uh, and it's, you know, I don't know how it's doing right now, but I expect it's doing pretty well because it's just, it, you know, it's, it's that iconic, nostalgic, classic, um, that, you know, that millennials grew up with and they are now themselves having their own kids. And so it's been become a multi-generational, you know, brand and, and, and character, you know, so, so we're, we're excited about it. I'm actually really excited about it, to be honest. You know, sometimes you do these interviews, you go, I have to be all excited. I'm, I am really excited so, because it really allows us now to forge ahead with uh, new content that we're creating, um, with with the character Airbud, and that's that's our next step. That we're, is the timing is right now. So, yeah, you, you know, you're absolutely right. There is this nostalgic edge to it. If you know people my age saying, "I want to, I want to show it to my kids," mm -hmm. um, I, I have to ask. I want to talk about the film. I want to talk about the franchise. Sure. This may be the most important question I ask you. Um, is it? Is there really no rule that says that no? <laughs> To your knowledge, is this there, is no a, rule? there is no rule, at least as far as I know, in uh, uh, junior high school basketball. <laughs> Whether there's a rule in the NBA, I'm not really sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, I that that is such, you know, there is nobody that doesn't know that quote, <laughs> ain't no rule, this is a dog can't play basketball. There isn't anybody. It, it's true. Honestly, this is what, this is a funny thing. Like when the film came out, like you know we quite frankly we just didn't have this sort of way we communicate with one another and, yeah in the way the internet and meme and just this idea that there ain't no rule that says dogs can't play basketball has become its own thing <laughs> well you know i remember when we i remember when that the the writers uh, paul tamasi i think it was paul that came up with that or maybe it was aaron i'm not sure because it was a while ago and it just made me laugh right right away i was like yeah. Because we were like, okay, how do we make sure this is so semi movie plausible? And, and he came up that well, there isn't, ain't no rule that says a dog can't play. I'm like, that's brilliant because it's like, of course, there isn't a rule that says a dog can't play basketball. And it, you know, it's like one of those moments where you just kind of laugh and you go, that's so ridiculous, it could work. And it was so it was so ridiculous 
uh, that it did work and it became this sort of nostalgic saying. So, uh, you know, it really, what it really means is basically why not? Exactly. You know, it's really that that's the statement is why not, you know? And you know what? And I mean this like outside of, outside of Disney. And I know this is, you know, like you said, pick, rights pick up by Disney, Disney, but like outside of Disney animated fair over the last three decades, there aren't a lot of franchises, kid-friendly fan franchises that have continued with the momentum that that Airbud has, and it started with with this first film. And uh, I, I'm wondering uh, how did the how did it begin? Like we know where it went, but how did Airbud get off the ground? Well, it, 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 there's a bit of a long story. At some at some point, I'm going to write a book. I just have to because it it really is one of those lightning in a bottle kind of. The, the, uh, uh, the, the truth is crazier than fiction stories, but I'm going to give you, I'll give you the, the short story on it is that I was watching um, David Letterman's Stupid Patrick's at home and I saw this dog shooting basketball, you know, which looked like regulation size basketball on a real hoop. And I'm like, that can't be true. That's, it was, so I actually called up the producers and I asked, you know, can I get the, the name of the dog, uh, the guy owner, dog owner, it was Kevin DeChico and he came to our office and uh set up a regulation size basketball hoop in our in our and out here in malibu in our our uh, you know parking lot and i was like i looked at the ball i'm like this is a real basketball and then you know then i was thinking okay well he's being because on a stage it looked like he was being sort of fed the ball you know and then but out in a out, out here in the parking lot kevin was just playing basketball with him like you'd play basketball with somebody else and the dog was hitting these because <laughs> they were like this is, it was so insane that there, it got, you know, it was around three o'clock that they were finishing up and it was a whole parking lot was full of kids. They're just come out of, kind of come out of school. So that was the first like moment where I, I went, oh my God, this is, there's something really unique about this hook. And then I think uh, after that, it was really the, the heart that that's, that script had that Paul and Aaron and, and ourselves developed. Uh, they were new writers in Hollywood. They hadn't really done much. Um, and they're just really talented guys and they had a lot of heart. And we kind of knew what we wanted to do. Like we wanted to do something that had, it wasn't just a hook, but like there's a hook, the dog plays basketball is a hook. We get that, but, you know, that's what people remember in terms of the marketing. But, you know, there's those scenes like when Kevin Zager tells Buddy to go away, you know, where I remember showing that to Joe Roth and Dick Cook, who were the head of Disney when they were looking to acquire it. And uh, and also the pudding cup scene. And we hadn't finished, you know, finished the movie yet. And, you know, they both had tears. You know, one of them, I can't remember who it was. I think Dick will laugh at me, but it, I think it was Dick, but I think it might, might have been Joe. One of them had a little bit of tears in the eyes. I was like, look, if I have this going on, yeah. <laughs> There's something special here, and then then we actually um, we actually uh, test screened it after the movie was finished with Disney, and it got the highest. It was be, it was way ahead of any other movies that Disney had done, and that's how it ended up with the Walt Disney Picture moniker, which at the time was super uh, for an acquisition, and I believe never happened before. So it was uh, it was like one of those special moments, and I remember one of the one of one of the other special moments I always. Uh, talk about was when we were leaving because I was a pretty young guy you know and you know Hollywood is a pretty brutal place even though we'd made 22 movies before this we'd never made a family movie and as I was leaving uh, Joe Ross said to me you know we'll be talking about this movie in 20 years yeah. and here's the funny thing is we were talking about this movie 26 years later <laughs> so so he was right but a little off on his timing but it was a you know it isn't just a movie about a dog who plays basketball it really resonates um around the world, you know? Uh, I, I I tell a story about when we were licensing it to Aichi and um, in China, for the first time it was being licensed in China. Aichi is like the Netflix of, of China. And we went over there for you know, the whole release of it. And I, and I walked and I was talking to him, I said, you know, we're really excited to, for the first time for people in China to see Air Bud. And the guy I was sitting across is, it told me a story about it. He watched it when he was a kid mm -hmm. and his parents in order for him to get good marks said, if he got good marks, he'd get a golden retriever. So it had already been pirated there forever and all that whole generation <laughs> growing up with it as well. And then we, he took us to this park and they had an Airbud golden retriever meetup 
every Sunday where people came with their golden retrievers and I had no idea. And wow. so uh, that it was really the most popular movie for the kids growing up in China in, in communist China um, was well, communist still, but when it, when it was not as open as it is, as it is today. So there's a lot that's gone on with Airbud. You know, you'll hear professional athletes like, you know, LeBron James say, I literally wore up that VHS tape when I was a kid or Matt Scott, who was a three-time Paralympic athlete, who said that that's what got him into basketball was watching Airbud when he was a kid and inspired him. And, you know, then there's just people that I've heard stories over the year, a guy that grew up in a foster home that really didn't have a very nice life. And he would play Air Bud. He had a little VHS player with, a, I won't mention his name because he hasn't never said I can, but a little VHS player TV combo in, in his tiny little room. And he used to put Air Bud on uh, every day because the story was really about a boy that had lost his father and, um, and, uh, and a dog that had been essentially abused coming together and basically saving each other. And so that really resonated with him. He didn't know he's a kid, but he was like, I used to watch it over and over and over and over again, just because it, it made, gave me comfort. You know, my life could be better and great. And so those are the kind of things we hear about all the time, you know, the impact. I, I like that word because, you know, on the surface, like even on the poster, the poster is a dog dunking a basketball. That's what yeah. it is. But that's not the, the heart of the story. And, and this is one of those franchises, like you said, it, it starts with a hook, but it, it ends up hitting different, you know, and, and you've got this kid and, and this connection uh, with Bud, with Buddy. And uh, it, it, yeah, that's, there's more to it. And it, it's still kid friendly. Like this is a kid friendly film with some complicated emotions in there. And um, I, I was wondering, you know, Certainly you've worked a lot with animals and whatnot with your films, with this franchise, but what is it about that special relationship that can help bring, bring healing? You know, we've got this kid dealing with grief and loss. Right. Well, I think, you know, for all of us who have family pets, especially dogs, you know, that for, I don't know how many thousand years, dog has been man's best friend, hmm. uh, more than a thousand years. So there's something special in that relationship with dog and dogs and humans. And we all know it. We, you know, I have, I have a golden fever, of course, at home and I had a, I have a Bernese mountain dog mm. and, you know, they're, they're as much part of the family as my kids are. In fact, sometimes I like them better. So, you know, it's like, they, there is a special relationship. My kids are sad. They'll go, you know, they'll go and now I have grandkids and our grandkids will come over and they'll just kind of lie on the golden retriever, or, you know, like, just it, there's there is a special connection we have with uh, dogs as human beings, but I, I think it's it's really that dogs don't talk unless we make them talk with visual effects, which we do. But they, you know, in, in Air Bud, it was just in, in any of those kind of movies is these kind of dogs, the Golden Retriever in particular. I would say there's a few breeds like that that are just such perfect family dogs. You know, you know they nobody nobody dislikes a Golden Retriever. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so i think it's a special human connection we have um they are family members not just not, not just pets basically you know so we need to look at it yeah it's true it's true and i, I know in in our like we had a dog before and you know there were times i was going through some deep stuff and my dog just didn't leave my side like she right. was there and it's like how do you know <laughs> but there is something special. You're absolutely right. Like they, they don't just become family members because they're in the house. They become family right. members because they actually engage with you in a special way. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. And, you know, I think that, so, you know, like, like I always say that we're making family movies mm. and, and if you'll go, oh, you're making dog movies. No, I'm making family movies. And the dog is part of, is part of, part of our family, you know, like it's not an adjunct or I'm, not making a movie about a dog all the time. It's, it's about really that, that, that family member. And I think that what we try to do thematically is always have issues uh, that resonate for families. You know, like we're not, you know, I always say, people always say, oh, you're making kid movies with animals. And I'm like, well, I'm not really trying to make kid movies. We know kids love them. I'm really trying to sort of embrace the family um, and make, make it sort of a, uh, Wrong way is wholesome because I think that sometimes people misunderstand what I'm saying when I say wholesome. But really, I want to I want things that 
have a real meaning attached to them, right? So, so if, if there's no if there's no meaning, is 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 so most movies don't survive the test of time. I don't whether it's a big Marvel movie or whatever because it's basically candy, you know. Okay, we we saw that. Now we can forget it. <laughs> you know, you don't you don't go back and go. I, I remember that you know action movie that was made. You know, with all this visual. You know, a movie like I'm, I'm looking behind you, have Raiders of the Lost Ark behind you, and, and you, Star Wars and Steven Spielberg movies. They, they always people. You know, Steven Spielberg always got um, kind of this reputation early on of making just you know movies that were kind of considered to be family movies or or broader picture family. But there is way deeper meaning in them if you really ever looked at them and you really thought about it. And that's why they resonated forever. You know, so E.T. or whatever it is. And that, so there's filmmakers that are, are uh, understand the craft and the writing in a sense that they're making, uh, they're trying to make a, a movie, they're, they're making a movie or a series that has real uh, heartfelt themes to them that are re relevant to, to us as parents or us as people and humans and like that's that's really what we're after and kids have so many emotions they're so true right you know they they will tell you immediately if they they feel anything or don't you know and that's and that's the mistake i think when people say oh you're making family movies you're making kid movies or whatever that's not that's of course that's what we're doing we're we're not we're making that for that audience as, but we're really making it for the broader family and I think that's the the real um, special nature of the Airbud franchise is that it wasn't just made for the kids; it was made for the for you to sit down with your kids and watch it, or your nieces and nephews, or whatever, whoever that it is, and uh, and really watch it together and enjoy it together. And, and that makes it perfect for the Disney brand, quite frankly, because that's yeah. what so many like. You know, they make they make family fair, and I it's interesting. I hearing you say that it's like, you know, you make. You may want to make, you know, friendly films for kids. That's fair, but it's also, what does that mean? When people say that, it, it can sound like they're they're limiting what it is. But any emotional hit, like I, I got Coco behind me. Coco is a yeah. Disney fair, and it hits right. different. Like it, could, you could say it's about a kid who's trying, you know, on an adventure and whatnot. And it is, but the emotions there are what make it so real. And Airbud's one of those. Yeah, I, I think if you watch all the buddies films and all the other ones, there's 14 of them now on Disney Plus, which is wow. so, you know, it's, it, you know, I always say to people like beginning of the beginning, watch Airbud, and then you'll really understand because that it, what what we've been trying to do always is, you know, I've been the steward of, you know, I, as, I didn't direct Charlie Martin Smith directed the original Airbud movie and did such a brilliant job. But, uh, you know, I've, I've directed the majority of the franchise and uh, written the majority of the fr franchise and and uh been the steward of the franchise so you know it's very easy to make one movie and not very easy it's very hard to make one movie that really resonates but it's even harder to create a franchise with that brand that really stands the test of time as well right so we've always tried to kind of um add something new unique but still stick with our roots so uh, i always say um uh, air Bud is our, is our cio our chief investment officer so what are we what what is what would Airbud want us to do if this is if we're making another Airbud franchise and or another Airbud and we you know and that's where we went like when we transitioned from the the Airbud movies to the Airbuds puppies like we really made sure that that transition was um was still in the same vein and didn't feel completely different than the rest of it although we are appealing a little differently or appealing a little younger audience um for that uh, and it worked. It actually was more successful than the original, than the original Air Bud movie. It was the Air Buddies movies. Wow. And uh, so, you know, and, did that, and so, and, and then now when we're looking forward to, uh, we're doing a 3D animated series, which is uh, going to be Air Buddy as a puppy and his, and his, his, uh, his dream team uh, friend, his dream team around him and his friends in his neighborhood. And, you know, we just feel like that we want to introduce younger kids and, you know, parents, millennial parents to the, who have children to their, their kids to that. And then we have a new Airbud movie that we're doing after that, that that is really something special to me. And we've been waiting. It's not, it's not like we didn't know we were going to do it. We were like, OK, we have to wait for the right timing, the audience to tell us that this is what needs to be done now, you know. 
I, I was going to ask you about that then. Is that because uh, that intrigues me too? Like, is that will that be a continuation of the story that you've built? Will it be a fresh reboot? What What are you looking at? It's completely fresh. So, and and you know, I mean, I think what number one thing I didn't want to do, and in, in the Airbud movie, we call it Airbud Returns, just because we don't want to put the title out there yet. But um, but really, what it is is I wanted something that was fresh and new, that wasn't just another sequel you know, uh, and, and continue them into another sport, but really a refresh of it. I think examples of that that have been, I think, well done was Creed was well done, oh, yeah. uh, the Rocky, and, you know, it's had a different, a different perspective. And I don't want to use the word modern because nothing, we, it's not really modern. It's more like uh, something that's more um, apropos to the experiences and the age for which um, we find ourselves in today, just like Airbud was, you know, it stood the test of time. But if you really look back, when it was done, it was absolutely in, of that era, you know? And and I think that one of, the, one of the real advantages we have in creating a new Air Bud movie is we don't have to pretend like Air Bud wasn't a real dog. Mm -hmm. It was a real dog. We can, we, we can uh, draft off the fact that Air Bud was a phenomenon and existed and it was real. So we don't have to pretend like the movie never happened or we're inside of, you know, so it, it, we we can we can have that we can stand on top of the the franchise and hearken back to it, but at the same time, uh, uh, really stand you know really present something really new and exciting, and that's that's our intention. We've had the script for a while, you know, just working on working on it. It's just like wow, this is like we're here, we're ready. So every time I go to tweak it now, I go don't don't touch it, <laughs> leave it alone. It's fine. We just have to, you know, so that, that won't be out for a couple of years where we have to wait a little. We want to get the series next. That's what we're working on right now. The animated series to introduce kids to the buddy character. And that's, yeah, that's our main mission right now. That's really exciting. And that'll go, will that go straight to streaming or will that go onto the network or is that, what's that? Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll go, it, well, it'll go, it'll be, a, everything's on streaming, right? So whether... I'm hoping it has a really, you know, broad, doesn't just be too exclusive because, you know, one of the th great things about Airbud and when Airbud was done is that it was well democratized among, among kids that were financially capable, a able, or families and, and families that are struggling. So I really love the idea that AVOD is out there now so that um, advertising, you know, a, lot, a base with lower price point allows everybody to see the movie. You know, a billion people have seen Airbud, more than a billion wow. people you know, worldwide. I mean, it's pretty, you, I, I, cause you know, I travel, I go around the world. I'm like, you know, and, you know, I was in Sicily uh, a few weeks ago and I was talking to the guy that we were cycling around my wife and I and some friends. And we were like, the guide was like, I, he said, Oh, what do you do? And I said, well, I, I make movies. He said, what movie you made? And I, Air, and I said, Airbud. And this, this Sicilian guy goes, what? That's my favorite movie. You know, like, it doesn't matter where you go, you know? He was at that age, you know, probably uh, 35 or something like that. But but it was, uh, that's just kind of a, a standard. There isn't anywhere in the world you can go that people don't know about. You know, I think that's something so special about this franchise. Like I said, this is one of those ones that, that no pun intended, had its own legs. You know, it's, right. you know, it, 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 it hit when we were kids. And it continues to to resonate. And yes, it may be a product of its own time, but at the same time, the things that made it so special can be brought up again sure. and brought back to life. And I think that's that's really cool. Uh, and I think that I think we always have this struggle, right? Like, you know, when you make family movies, you know, who, who wins an Academy Award for a family movie? Right. Nobody. <laughs> you know. An animated movie will win, you know, best, uh, you know, best music or best whatever, you know, but I think that, that, that nothing's more impactful and Disney is really the moniker that everybody relies on for family, right? So, you know, uh, but it's very easy if you're, if you're Disney or you're any of the S5 channels to, to really rely on your data to tell you what movies should be done next. And if you do that, it's basically what was successful yesterday is going to be successful tomorrow, you know? And I think that's a, it's a huge mistake, you know, in, in, in the, there, I, there still isn't any algorithm that I'm aware of or AI, you know, that's going to tell you what's a blank sheet, sheet of paper is going to look like when it's finished. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's, you know, and and we've sort of lost that 
you know, entrepreneurial sort of producer that was, you know, so it would, it would take a risk on something, you know, it's, it, it's much harder to do that because you have so few places to go. So it's, it's kind of, if you watch all the SVOD channels, you know, any of them, they're all, they all are all going after the same thing because they're all assuming the same due to data is correct. And then along comes the Barbie movie, right? <laughs> like, like, I just kind of laugh because I'm like, I, I can just see that. Um, you know, we always sit around here and say, what's our next stupid idea? Because Airbud was, I, I, and I use that because I went, I, went, I can't remember which studio said it to me, but they said, this is a really stupid idea. <laughs> It'll never work. And I just kind of laugh because that's, we start every meeting with what's our next stupid idea? Because <laughs> that's the one that's really going to work. It's not the one that everybody's already thought of or was, you know, like something else that was successful yesterday. You're always looking for something that, need that that it's screaming to be made and i have a few of those you know like and and i i remember the you know everybody is a hair on the back of the neck moment you know like you just know this is going to get made i just know that this Airbud returns movie is going to be a massive hit i can feel it on the back of my neck you know it's just like i, I it's going to get made and i don't care how it gets made just like i didn't care about how Airbud got made originally it got made the financing was the Bertelsmann Group out of Germany, C CLT, RTL uh, out of Germany, ourselves as a Canadian content movie, and um, and a bunch of uh, sales that we did uh, internationally. That's how it all got done. You know, it was like it didn't get done by walking into the studios and they go, "This is our greatest idea ever." <laughs> it wasn't even close. In fact. One of my prized possessions until um, it burned in the fire in Malibu, my house burned on uh, that last Wolseley fire, was that I had um, on my wall a rejection letter from Disney that was sent by their development department a month after the movie had been released. So the person who was, the, it was like one of their head development executives, I won't, I, I had their name, I have a picture of it somewhere, it's the greatest. And, and it's like, oh, this movie isn't right for Disney, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, did you ever check to see if it had already been released? <laughs> it was already a huge success. <laughs> so not, not to pick on people, it's just that it's too hard to take this, you know, piece of paper and go, oh, that's a, that's going to be, you know, you, you, you have, there is a risk element to this, and a portfolio, if you use an investment terms, you got to look at it like a portfolio and, and I think the it's kind of what's missing right now. There's no risk taking uh, in our business, and family films have fallen out of favor again. But you know, you said when Air Bud, like when we did Air Bud, nobody wanted it, and that's what that's why I was trying to remind people is like nobody wanted it. You know, there wasn't one person, one studio that wanted it, and we went to everybody. So, you know, that's the entrepreneur. The entrepreneur is what makes America great, not. The big multinational companies you know they pick things up but it's really the entrepreneur that really makes things happen i i love i love to hear that because it really that that even adds to the story in some ways this is amazing sort of rise to it from people that said it, it's not going to meet it's not going to meet our ends and uh our uh our quotas and then it does above and beyond and becomes its own thing it's it's that's really great i love to hear that that's that's pretty cool robert i love it yeah, I mean everything's an everything's an instant success that took twenty five years, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Robert, honestly, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for chatting with me. The the, yeah, the films, the franchise is so much fun, and uh, I'm glad that a whole new generation gets to enjoy. And and I'm looking forward to seeing Airbud returns and. Oh, <laughs> Never work with kids and animals. I love your, I love your dog on. That's the best. <laughs> she's a cutie. She's she's um, just a pup too. So, yeah, auditioning right now. I know. So if you need one, here you go. <laughs> if you, she needs to look at the camera. You got to hit your marks. <laughs> got to hit your marks, Ellie. Hit, hit your marks. There you go. Anyway. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I Thanks appreciate. So much. It. Have a great yeah. day. Thanks so you much. You too. Bye bye. 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 B